Welcome back. We're about a minute and a half away from getting the third quarter underway. And uh, again, if you're just joining us at halftime, it's uh, been all Hicksville Aces in the first half of this uh, football contest as uh, the Aces lead the Rams 21 to nothing here at halftime. Now the, uh, the Tenora team will get the football to start the third quarter. Uh, the Aces uh, received to start the uh, start the game. So they'll be kicking it off to Tenora to start the third quarter. And if you're the Aces, you got to be feeling pretty good at this point, actually, because uh, you, they've uh, really done well. And really, the Aces have been doing very well offensively. They have uh, their passing game is working very effectively. They've been able to run the ball. And uh, they've been able to uh, get the job done defensively as well, again, keeping the Rams out of the end zone. The Tenora Rams uh, need to make some adjustments. Their ground game has not been working for them tonight. And uh, you can tell that they really do not have a big passing attack. And, of course, as they go on to the defense, the other thing is that they have to be careful. Uh, Parker Thiel was uh, sort of like the star receiver in the first half. But you got to remember, you got Peyton Tunis and you got Langham and Sanderson too. So if they focus on Thiel, Greer can just switch to one of his other good receivers and uh, keep right on going that with the air game that way too. So a big challenge, and again, a, a lot of ground to make up for the Rams. Victor Coat, boy, he puts his leg into that one. It's caught way back at the 10 yard line. Returned out to the 30, still on his feet, and they take him down by the ankles uh, just across the 30. Return from uh, number 36. I'm looking at the wrong roster here. Oh, excuse me, I almost said Austin Gillespie. That's not it. Brendan Dingus with the return out to the 32-yard line. So about a 22-yard return from Dingus. And that's where the Rams will get things started here, first and 10, as the second half underway. Week number seven of the high school football campaign. And again, glad to have you here with us from Ram Country on Hicksville Community Television. Had to have an official stoppage of play while they got the, uh, got the tee off of the field from the kickoff. Drews. Drive, driving back to throw, and Drew's in a world of trouble. He returns, reverses field, and now he's running for his life. Drew's might get a couple yards after all was said and done. That's one of those plays where the ball carrier runs for about six, <laughs> runs for about 30 yards, but only manages to pick up two or three. That'll be second down now and about seven as they get it out just shy of the 35-yard line. Drews wanted to throw it, but there was just nothing there. Again, they've got a lone receiver out wide on the far side. Pitch back to big number 42, and they're going to stop him short of the first down at about the 40-yard line. So again, Martin gets the carry. Spencer Martin, their big senior running back, but he's brought up short, and they still have a couple yards to go to move the chains, third and two. Rams will huddle up. Play clock ticking down. They had to burn a couple of timeouts in the first half because they oh, were going to run out of time on the play clock, and they may have to do it again here. And... Uh, that's going to be a delay a game. They run out of time. I was waiting for the timeout, but they didn't call it, and that'll back them up five. So they're third and two, which would have been very manageable for 
for their big running back, Martin, now becomes a third and seven. So, and again, I guess if there's one, one glaring weakness on the Rams offense, it's not so much the passing or the running, it's that they have sometimes taken way too long to get the play in from the sideline. Drews, quick handoff, nothing doing. And the Aces pile on and they stop him at about the uh, 40, or make that about the 37, 38 yard line and make it fourth down. So the Rams, delay of game call takes them out of contention for a easy first down and now it looks like they're gonna have to punt it away. And I'm sure that that's not the way they wanted this third quarter to start. Way high snap and barely getting away. And they're going to flag the, they're gonna flag the aces for running into the kicker, which is not a, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's not a good call. He was, he got the kick away and the other, the other, he was stopped, he pulled up and I could see giving him the five yard, but the big 15-yarder, I don't think that that was appropriate. But I'm not wearing a striped shirt. So, well, like I said, so, you know, when, 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 you're, when you're going to try to block the kick and they get it away and you pull up and you can't stop, but, I mean, he was doing everything possible to not hit the kicker. Dropping back to pass. He manages to get the ball away. It's caught and taken down immediately. Receiver number five, Alex Henry. Henry hauls the ball in and gets taken down for another first down at about the 43 yard line. So the Rams seeing if they can take advantage of the running into the kicker, roughing the kicker, not running into the kicker. They got called for roughing the kicker. So they're gonna see if they can take advantage of that and get some momentum back here. Pitch back to Martin. Martin, they swarm him under. No gain. Martin not able to turn the corner and again they latch on and take him down. Now will make it second and ten. So Spencer Martin not able to make anything happen that time for the Rams. So the Rams come out of the huddle. Drews, again, is going to work under center. Nobody out wide on either side. Drews dropping back to throw, though. Drews in trouble, and they're going to get him. They'll take him down back at about the 48-yard line. And uh, that was uh, Lucas Yoder, number 58, getting the quarterback and getting credit for the sack. Clock continues to roll, and the Rams now looking at third and about 15 with eight minutes to go here in quarter number three. So the Aces doing the job defensively, needing to keep the pressure on here. Inside handoff to Martin. Martin powering forward, but he's not going to get the first down. Martin gets inside the 40 down to about the 39 but that's still gonna leave them with third and long, but at least they're in Aces territory. And down 21, they may decide that uh, they're gonna go for it here. They're talking it over, they break huddle. So the Rams on a fourth and six, looking to go for it here. And I expect that the big man is gonna get the handoff. Nope, they're gonna try to throw it, ball is in the air. And he overthrows everybody, and they'll turn it over on downs. Drews showed a power run and then dropped back to throw the, throw the ball. The only problem was he threw it about four feet higher than his receiver's outstretched hands. 
Sails out of bounds, incomplete. And that gives the ball back to the Aces on downs. And decent field position, too, as they'll take over first and 10 on their own 39-yard line. Two out wide on either side for Jake Greer. Works out of the shotgun. Aaron behind a quick hitter off to the sideline. Diving forward, only picking up a few. I think that was Parker Thiel. And Thiel looks like he might have picked up two or three. They're going to say second and eight. And this time he'll come over to this side, and that one's a little too high and through the hands of Peyton Tunis. That'll bring up third and eight. So Tunis just couldn't quite jump high enough. Goes through his hands, and a third and long for the Aces. They'll bring Tunis in, put a man in motion. And uh, again, thrown over the middle, caught by Tunis on the run. Tunis, he's off to the races. They might have an angle on him, but I don't think it's going to be in time. Nope, Tunis into the end zone, touchdown. As we said when we got ready to start the third quarter, if you focus too much on Parker Thiel, that could open up Tunis or Sanderson or Langham. And Tunis that time caught the pass at a full run right in the middle of the field, and he was off to the races into the end zone. Put six more on the board for the Aces. Victor Coat comes out to see if he can make it a 28-0 game. Tunis checking to make sure. Down, kick is up. And looks good, it is. 28-0, Aces on top now with 6.36 to go in the third quarter. And now you gotta consider the fact that if the Aces score two or more points before the Rams do. They'll have that 30-point margin and kick on the continuous clock, which will really put the Rams in a world of hurt. So, so a safety, field goal, or another TD. And now the Rams, the Rams really are in a position where they have to score. They have to get some points on the board because we've already seen a few times this season, if you're on the wrong end of that continuous clock, you can really, really have a hard time getting back into the game. We've seen the Aces on the receiving end of that one time, and the Aces have put their opponents on the receiving end a couple of times. And not, no, on all three occasions, the teams on the short end were not able to overcome the continuous clock. Ball's teed up. And again, we wait to see whether it's going to be Travian Tunis, Victor Cote, or Brandon, Braden Langham. And it looks like it's gonna be Cote. And he's gonna put his foot into it. And it'll be scooped up at the 20 yard line. Big number 26 churning forward across the 40. That was Andrew Imthern, number 26, making the grab, and he gets out to the 41-yard line where the Rams will have it first and 10. So here come the Rams, down by four touchdowns. Looking to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. One wide receiver on the near side, quick handoff. And right up the middle, and that's good for about three yards. So Martin again pounds it right up the gut of the Aces defense. Picks up three to make it second and seven. Way coming in from the sideline. They're getting him in a little more quickly now after that delay of game that they got hit with earlier. Drews under center. Drews, quick handoff up the middle. Powering forward. 
out to about midfield. It's not going to be enough for a first down, but it'll give them third and short. They keep the clock rolling. They get it just on the Aces side of the midfield stripe where it'll be third and one. So here come the Rams, needing a yard to move the chains. Here's big number 42 getting warmed up in the backfield. Quick handoff, and that should be good enough for the first down. Handoff to number 36, Dingus. So Dingus will get him a fresh set of downs. He only manages to get about a yard. So put the ball down at the Aces 48 yard line, first and 10 Rams with five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Rams have a receiver out wide on the far side of the field. Drews though just hands it off the middle again and they're gonna take him down at the 45 yard line. Pick up of about three, uh, makes it second and seven. And yep, I, I agree with Amy. If uh, the, this is what the Rams want to do, I imagine the Aces might be content to just let them bang it up the middle. And even if they move it three, four yards at a time and even get into the end zone, because they're going to they're going to burn up so much time on the clock, they're not going to be able to. They aren't going to have enough time to score four touchdowns. So again, the Rams, and again a handoff. And this time they're waiting for him. Nothing doing. Gets down to the 45 yard line and not much beyond that. And uh, we're under four minutes now. So third down and seven for the Rams. And the Aces, like I said, they're content. I mean, the Rams want to do the running up the middle. They're going to let them do it. I said, I said they can give up three or four yards. And I said even if, even if the Rams walk it down the field and get into the end zone, at the rate they're going, they won't be able to do that before the quarter ends. Dropping back to throw, Drews looking downfield, nothing doing. Drews being pursued. Drews hit as he throws, incomplete. And so that's going to bring up fourth down and seven from the Aces 45 yard line. Drews wanted to throw it, but he just did not have anybody open downfield and uh, could not get it away. He was hit as he threw it and the ball just sort of did a flailing, dying swan into the sideline and that's fourth down. And decision time for the Rams. I mean, they're down by four touchdowns, so you kind of feel they gotta have to go for it here. Long way to go. But that's what they're going to do. The Rams know they need to get something going here offensively. They need to get some points on the board. Drews, handoff, and they're going to stop him well short. And the Aces are going to take it over on downs. So again, the Rams tried to run it up the middle, and they have not been doing that very successfully tonight. The Aces waiting for it. And uh, they uh, take him down, minimal gain. He picked up maybe about a yard or so. So the Aces are going to take over on downs. It'll be first and 10 on their own 43 yard line. And now the Rams really need to start sweating because if the Aces are able to put any kind of points on the board on this possession, then uh, again, it'll kick on the continuous clock and it'll be in the Aces favor. And the Rams will be really, really hurting at that point. So the Aces in control here at this point Still a lot of game to play, though. 3.09 left to go in the third quarter. Greer hangs on, shuffles, just shrugs off a defender, and Greer fumbles it, but it goes out of bounds. And I think it might have been caused by the ground anyway. But Greer, quarterback keeper, he was in the grasp of one of the Rams defenders, but he literally just shrugged, shrugged him off and, and just barged straight ahead taken down about the 44 yard line. Again, uh, the ball came loose at the end, but I think he was already down. And even if, it, even if that wasn't the case, it hopped right out of bounds. So 
The Aces retain possession either way. Three minutes exactly to go in quarter number three. Parker Thiel out wide on the far side. Tunis in motion. Hands it off to Parker, or Peyton Tunis. Tunis, Tunis still on his feet. Tunis heading towards the end zone. Tunis cutting back upfield, and Tunis finally taken down inside the 10. Peyton Tunis with another strong run from scrimmage as he takes it all the way down near the five yard line. No flags on the play. And we're gonna have a timeout on the field. So I'm not sure who he indicated took the timeout. But it is going to be first and goal for the Aces on the six yard line when we come back into play. And like I said, there is a timeout on the field, but I did not see, and it's not on the scoreboard yet, so I'm not sure whether that's an Aces timeout or a Rams timeout. I would think it would probably be the Rams because they need to figure out a way to keep the Aces out of the end zone. Okay, an injury timeout. Ah, there we go. All right. Didn't see him over on the far sideline, but one of the Rams got his bell rung. He is up and walking off under his own power. So that's why there was no time off taken, timeout taken off of either side of the scoreboard. Injury timeout. Well, I apologize for that. I overlooked the guy down on the far side of the field and didn't, didn't realize that was what was going on. Even I make mistakes sometimes. 2.49 <laughs> here to go in the third quarter. And the Aces knocking on the door again. They've got a first and goal on the Tenora six yard line. So they'll wind the clock back up, play clock down to about 17 seconds. Greer gets in position. Aaron, the black back beside him and a handoff to Aaron and Aaron, nothing doing that time. Might've got back to the line of scrimmage. I mean, second and goal. It looks like he might have even lost a yard. So Nate Arend gets taken down back at the seven yard line. So it'll be second and goal for the Aces. 2-11 and counting on the clock. Man in motion and Greer goes straight ahead and he gets inside the five yard line down to about the four. And again, the Aces in no hurry. It's gonna be third down and goal. They're, if you've been watching, they're pretty much within the range of Coat if they wanted to kick a field goal. And they're gonna let the play clock go down a little bit more. And here we go, third and goal from the four yard line for the Aces. And Greer floats it over and Aaron makes the grab and he's taken down for a bit of a loss back at about the six or seven yard line where it'll be fourth down. So we'll see, are they gonna, looks like Coates coming out onto the field. Minute five, Victor Coat. Going to see if he can kick the field goal. So we'll see what happens here with Victor Coat. Down, up, and it's going to be short. I think it might have got uh, partially blocked by number 21 from the Rams, Josiah or Jonah Jimenez. So the Rams can breathe a little sigh of relief. The Aces come up short and don't put any points on the board. And that will uh, give the ball back to the Rams. They'll turn, over, turn it over on downs. 
And we'll see where they place the ball. It should be at the 20 yard line. So 38 seconds left in the quarter. And the Rams have the ball first and 10 on their own 20 yard line after the failed field goal attempt. Quick handoff and a gain of about three. Clock continues to roll. It'll be second down and about seven. And that, well, we'll see if they get another playoff here before the quarter ends. The play clock is not going. And I guess they're just going to let time expire, and they do, and that's the end of the third quarter. So they didn't even start the play clock, so the Rams must have indicated that they weren't going to snap the ball before the quarter ends. So we've played three, and the Aces have added to their lead. They're up now 28 to nothing over the Rams here at Tenora High School. Well, we'll get ready for the last 12 minutes of football here on this Friday night by saying another huge thank you to our football broadcast underwriters, the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick and Jim Schmidt Ford. You know, if you were in the market for a vehicle, whether you want one that's brand spanking new or pre-owned, be it a car, or truck, van, or SUV, stop by, check out the great selection they have on the lots at the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships, or you can check out their entire inventory online at jimschmidtauto.com. And don't forget, in addition to the cars, they've got great service departments as well. Whether you need basic maintenance or some major repair, they've got you covered at the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships as well. We want to thank them so very much for once again underwriting our football coverage here for the 2017 season on Hicks TV. We hope that you will do the same and uh, let them know how much you appreciate enjoying Aces football on Hicks TV. The Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, and online at jimschmidtauto.com. Second and seven on their own 23-yard line. And another scrum towards the center of the field. They'll be short of the first down marker. Looks like they get out to about the 26. Pick up of another three. And we're gonna have another timeout as we have another player down on the field for the Rams. And it looks like he's cramped up. So when we get back into action, it'll be third down and four from the 26 yard line for the Tenora Rams. As again, they've uh, had another, another player down and uh, this one obviously a cramp. The trainer's out there stretching out that uh, upper leg. So the Aces, getting things done tonight and doing what they needed to do. They've had a very night, very successful night offensively. Their uh, running game has been working when they needed to. Jake Greer has had some great carries, as has Peyton Tunis. And uh, also the uh, passing game done very well with, uh, again, three touchdown receptions for Parker Thiel and one for Peyton Tunis. And the kicking game, pretty good, too. Four for four. The extra point attempts for Victor Cote and... Just missed being able to uh, split the uprights for the field goal. One of the Rams just barely getting a hand on it, just enough to change the trajectory and have it come up a little bit short. So third and four for the Rams, their own 26-yard line. Eleven forty-six, and the clock starts rolling as soon as they get in position. One wide receiver out for the Rams, and they're going to try to run it again. And we'll see. It looks like they might have moved the chains across the 30-yard line. So the Rams get to the 31-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down. They needed, they needed four, and they got about five. So the Rams stay on the field offensively, which is what they need to do. Another quick handoff, and there's a nice hole. And Tunis drags him down. That was Martin, 
who lumbers down to about the 40 yard line. Tunis finally wrapped him up and brought him down. But that's probably the. Yeah, let's say Tunis was, let's see, Martin is 230 pounds on the chart. And uh, let's see, Peyton Tunis is 150 pounds. <laughs> so, and, and a little shorter too. 6-3 against 5-9, but Tunis took him down. And that, I, I kid you not, that was the most successful offensive play for the Rams on the ground here tonight. Another handoff, but this time they stop him after picking up maybe two. So when you got a big, when you got a big, a big and a very good back, a senior experienced back like Martin, sooner or later they're going to pick up their yards. But again, this is the first time tonight that Martin, I think, has carried the ball for more than three or four. So, and uh, and as Amy said, yep, they they're keeping it on the ground and in bounds they keep that clock rolling which is always that's the, the aces advantage Drews again hands it off powering forward and taken down after a pickup of another three or four I'll bring up third down and like I said the aces are more than willing to let him grind it out like this on the ground up the center of the field keep that clock rolling because the amount of time they're burning off, there's no way that they're going to be able to score four touchdowns to tie this game up at nine minutes and 41 seconds. The only way the Rams are going to be able to overcome that deficit and get back into this game is to strike from the air. Drews takes the snap. Again, hands it off to big number 42, and the Aces are waiting for him that time, and he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage back at the 35-yard line. So the Rams now with a fourth down. And uh, again, back at the 34 yard line. So that'll be fourth and about a you know, long four. Obviously the Rams gonna go for it. They don't have any choice here. They're down by 28. So they've gotta go just shy of five yards to move the chains. Quick handoff. And uh, he's not going to make it. Coach Smith and the team on the sideline raising their hands, saying, all right. Another great job by the Aces defense as uh, the Rams come up short on fourth down, and they turn it over to Hicksville. 840 left in the game, and the Aces are going to get the ball back first and 10 on their own 33-yard line, or 32-yard line. I stand corrected. So the Rams still not able to really get anything going, although they came close to getting something going offensively on that series. Find themselves back on defense. And the Aces, again, will be content to just uh, do what they can here. Quick throw, caught by Parker Thiel. Thiel out to the 38-yard line. And another Ram down with a cramp. And that looks like it might be Drews, their quarterback which might be, we'll see, but I, th I think that's number 11 that is down with obviously a leg cramp. And so if their quarterback is gonna start cramping up, that could have an effect here down the stretch here. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left to go in regulation. And really this game has been moving along pretty quickly and uh, this has been uh, kind of the stop and go is starting here in this uh, fourth quarter with the uh, Rams. Uh, this is their third official timeout because of an injured player. So popping up, yeah, that's number 11. So their quarterback, who plays both ways, is also defensive back, Jake Drews. Heads off the field under his own power, and I'm sure he'll be back. He has to sit out at least to play. Eight and a half minutes to go, and again, second down for the Aces. Looking at a second and four on their own 38-yard line. 
Parker Thiel, the back out on the near side towards us. Greer. Quick handoff to number eight. And uh, nothing doing there, no gain on the carry. Langham gets the carry and gets taken down for no gain, so it'll be third and four. And they keep the ball, keep the clock rolling, but keeping the ball on the ground. And now there's three wide receivers out on the near side towards us, one on the far side, Greer. Pitches it over, caught by Tunis. Tunis with a hole. Ayton diving forward, and that's going to be real close. I think he might be a little bit short. And it looks like Tunis was diving for the first down marker. The Aces are saying we got it. The officials are saying we'll measure. So an official timeout for the measurement as to see whether the Aces are going to have fourth in inches or a first down. I think that they're going to be a little bit short. Yep. So it'll be fourth and inches for the Aces. And we'll see what Coach Smith wants to do here. Still on Hicksville's side of the field. So they want to punt it and see if they can pin the Rams deep and let them run their ground game and burn some more time off the clock. So Greer is still on the field, but of course you got to remember Greer is also the punter. So, and he's the one that uh, pulled off the deceptive punt the last time. So we'll see if they're going to go for it on fourth and inches. Greer's stepping forward, and he's going to get him the first down. So Greer moving up under center and just a quarterback sneak. The old submarine play just down in in across the line he went. So the Aces only needed about nine inches, and Greer got him about a foot and a half. That's good enough to move the chains. And now Jake Greer is going to be keeping one eye on the play clock and letting it go down below 10 seconds probably before he snaps the ball. Quarterback keeper Greer going to just power straight ahead and get back uh, to the 45-yard line, pickup of a yard maybe. Make it second and nine. Clock continuing to roll. Again, both the Rams and the Aces have their full complement of three timeouts. But like I said, right now for the Rams, there's no real point in stopping the clock. Greer, hard count, almost gets him to jump. Jake drops back, floats it over, caught. Langham, Langham on his feet. Langham shakes a defender. Langham takes it down to the, well, down inside the 30 before they finally put him to the turf. And it looks like he's going to get down to about the 25, 26 yard line. Braden Langham with the catch and a nice run afterwards. We'll see where they officially mark the ball. I said it looks like about, about the 23 yard line. Nope, I take it back. They're gonna put it right on the 25. Greer hands it off. Tunis turns the corner. Tunis into the end zone. Touchdown. No flags. Aces are gonna go up. 34 to nothing. And this last five minutes and 58 seconds might go really, really fast because that's going to engage the continuous clock. And that means the Rams, the clock will not stop unless they call timeout. 34 to nothing with 5.58 to go in the game. It has been all Hicksville tonight.
Victor Coat with Peyton Tunis, the holder. Snap, down, kick is up. More than enough leg. Coat splits the uprights again. He is 5-4-5. Five, five. And it's 35-0 Hicksville. And this game, which everybody thought was going to be a real dogfight between two teams undefeated in the Green Meadows Conference and two teams with four and two records, two teams that are in the same county and have a big, big rivalry has turned out to be kind of like a wet firecracker in a way because it just is not, uh, it has just not been a big smash mouth football game. Don't get me wrong, Aces fans, we are all very, very happy the way things are going. And our team has been doing the, doing a good job. The Aces came prepared and they have got, they have taken care of business here tonight. There's no doubt about it. The Rams though are the ones that are gonna be reeling. And I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to, well, they're gonna have to try to find something to bounce back on. and. I don't envy their team meeting when they look at the tapes for this one. Ball teed up on the 40-yard line. Ace is ready to kick it off to the Rams once again. And we'll see who's going to handle the kicking chores this time. And it looks like it's going to be Coat. And Coat's going to leg it up. Caught at about the 36-yard line and brought out to about the 42. And they'll stop the clock until they get the teams out and get the possession changed. They'll set it down, they'll get the Rams offense out. And in a clear sign of how this game is going, the coaching staff that we've been sharing from Hicksville that we've been sharing the press box with are making their way down onto the field right now. They, they don't, they're not worried about the outcome of this game at all. 5.28, continuous clock about to begin. Drews hands it off, powers forward, not much there. Two, three yards maybe down to about the 44-yard line. And that'll make it second and eight. We are under five minutes now. And we'll kind of check things out here because uh, the, the Rams have run up the white flag and they're bringing out some of their younger players. Uh, the, Ram the Aces have some of their younger players out on the field as well. Carry to the 45 yard line. Make it third and six. So the Rams with a third and six. Got a wide receiver out and a bad snap. They're able to fall on top of the ball and maintain possession, but that's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth and six for Tenora from their own 46-yard line. And the Rams will bring the play in from the sideline, and they've got nothing to lose. They might as well go for it. It's academic. I mean, this game's over. But when you get the younger kids in, this is a good chance for them to get some experience on uh, varsity playing conditions, game situation. Hand off and a nice run, and that's going to move the chains. That was number 21, Jonah Jimenez with the carry. And that'll be a Rams first down out to the Aces 44 yard line, 250, and the clock rolling. 
said it does not stop. Rams will break huddle. Quick handoff and another nice carry. Their new quarterback, by the way, is number one. It's Mark Grube. And about a nine-yard carry. So Grube hands it off, and they pick up nine. So a break huddle and come up again. Grube under center. Grube takes the snap, hands it off. And they'll move it down to about the 30-yard line. Good enough for another first down. As we're down to 90 seconds, like I said, the clock moves mighty quick. And you go to the continuous clock. And what's going to turn out to be, I think, one of the most quickly played games that we have covered this season. Minute 15 when they snap the ball. Hand off, and the Aces have his number that time. He's going to pick up maybe a couple. Inside the 30, but maybe you know, the 29-yard line, where it'll be second and nine as we go under a minute in the game. So second and nine for the Rams. And they're just, again, they're just using this as a chance to get some playing time experience for their younger kids right now. Mo might be the last play of the game. And they'll bring him down after a pickup of, again, a couple of yards. And they've got 23 seconds on the clock and 25 seconds on the play clock, so they don't even need to snap the ball. They could call it right here, and, uh, yep, the Rams are walking off the field. So we're going to hang on here for about eight seconds to make it official, but the Aces are going to remain undefeated in the Green Meadows Conference. Time expires, and it's another one in the win column for Hicksville. As the Aces invade Ram Country tonight and come away victors, 35 to nothing, the final score. If, as expected, the Wayne Trace Raiders are victorious against Hicks, uh, Holgate tonight, next week the Aces are heavily favored to defeat Antwerp, who has not yet won a GMC game. And uh, the Raiders facing off against Edgerton, another game that Wayne Trace should have an advantage to win. So that sets up what could be quite the clash in Raider country at Wayne Trace for week number nine. But we'll worry about that in a couple of weeks. Right now, the Aces are going to bask in the glow. They're going to head home for homecoming next week on a winning streak. They are 4-0 and oh in the Green Meadows Conference. They are 5-2 and two overall on the season. And they have, again, done what they needed to do. They've staked their claim, and they are still in the running for a shot at an outright GMC title. And they don't hurt their chances to uh, see uh, some action in week number 11, depending on how the computer points shake out after this weekend's games as well. Once again, we want to say a huge thank you to the athletic department here at Tenora High School. Always a pleasure to come over here. Uh, we. Uh, we really enjoy the uh, visitor's press box, a nice setup that they have for us. And, uh, and again, they always make us feel very welcome, and we cannot thank them enough. Thanks also, once again, to the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships and online at jimschmidtauto.com, our football broadcast underwriters, making our coverage of Aces football possible, especially the road trips that we take when the Aces are playing those away games. So again, with the win, the Aces will get ready to return home next week. It's homecoming week, and uh, the Antwerp Archers will be coming to Aces Field to take on Hicksville, and we'll have the action for you right here on Hicks TV.
One final time tonight from Tenora Rams Field. It is uh, the Aces blanking the Tenora Rams in this GMC clash, 35 to nothing. The final score for Amy Murphy on the camera. I'm Bill Murphy for Hicksville Community Television wishing you good night and good sports.